Hi guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, my name is Sim and I'm a South African that is currently living in Edinburgh. And at the time of filming this video, I have been in the UK now for just about a year. <coughs> Saying that feels so crazy. Somehow the year feels a lot longer, but then it also feels a lot shorter. So it's a very weird feeling. And I've just kind of been looking back at the year. I think 2020 was just completely different than the whole world expected. But seeing as I was feeling reflective, I decided to make this video to share my story of why I decided to move to the UK how I actually moved to the UK from South Africa. I'll also include a summary of what my first year was like and at the end I'll do a pros and cons list of the move which I'm hoping will help anyone else that's thinking of moving over to the UK or just immigrating overseas in general. If you're maybe only interested in a specific part of the video, I'll leave timestamps down below in the description and then you can just check that part out. This is just gonna be quite a chilled, sit down, chatty video. So I got myself a nice hot drink here in my cool Harry Potter cup. It's quite a big cup. And then I also have some chocolate chip cookies here. So get yourself a drink, get yourself a snack, and then let's get into the video. Okay, so first up we have why I decided to move the UK, why I decided to leave my family and my friends back in South Africa. Let me tell you, it is not an easy thing to do. But moving to the UK, specifically actually London, England, has always just been a dream of mine since like a very young age. I've been obsessed with London. I had like a fascination with studying at Oxford and I'm not completely sure where this fascination came from. I know I've always loved traveling because my dad used to travel a lot when I was younger. So I think that just always seemed so cool to me that he got to go all over the world and he would always like bring us gifts back. So I definitely think my dad traveling a lot kind of inspired me in a way that I wanted to see the world. But then somewhere along the way, I just got very fixated on the UK. This might also be related to my obsession with Harry Harry Potter, I'm not sure, but obviously that was filmed in the UK and a lot of the scenes are filmed in Oxford. So I'm not sure where this obsession came from, but you get the idea. I've been wanting to do it for so long and then eventually I was lucky enough for it to become a reality. So that summarizes one of the two main points why I wanted to leave. My obsession with the UK and then also just a desire to see the rest of the world. So building on the traveling part of it, when you live in the UK, it's a lot easier to travel to Europe because it's a lot closer. It's also a lot easier to just go to other countries in general because the pound is worth so much more than the rand. So having the rest of the world be so much more accessible and affordable was definitely like very appealing to me because I love to travel. One of the last reasons that I don't really want to focus on too much, just because it is a bit negative, it also wasn't one of my main reasons, but I know for a lot of other people that have immigrated from South Africa, that's definitely had a big influence on why they decided to leave the country. And that is the high crime rates that we have in South Africa. Although South Africa is a beautiful country, it is definitely not a safe country. So we decided to take this opportunity while we still don't have much to lose. Because obviously the older you get, the more settled in you get. And the harder it is to actually move to another country. I think that kind of summarizes all the reasons why I wanted to move to the UK. So now I'll go into how I was actually able to move here. Whenever I think back on the period of when we started our moving plans and just the whole process, I just remember a lot of admin, a lot of stress, and it was a really expensive process to go through. So I wouldn't say it's the fondest memories that I have, but in the end, it was all worth it. I am in the UK now, so it all worked out. 
because I am South African, I don't have any other nationality or passport. I need a visa if I want to visit the UK, if I just want to live here, but also most importantly, if I actually want to work here. So if you are South African that's thinking about moving to the UK, just keep that in mind. If you just have a South African passport, you will definitely have to apply for some sort of visa. Because my husband has a British passport, because his family is from Scotland, we were able to apply for a spousal visa for me which also enables me to work in the UK. I'm not gonna go into too much detail about the visa because that is an entire video by itself. If you are South African and you want to know more about the process, how it works, how long it takes, what you need, how much it costs, just let me know in the comments and then I can definitely make a video with a full breakdown of that. If you've ever applied for a tourist visa, the process is kind of similar to that. It just takes a lot longer, they require a lot more information and it comes with a hefty price tag. So you start the process very straightforward, just completing a bunch of forms. But I feel like they basically asked me to name every country that I've been to since I was born. They want to see like WhatsApp messages and emails between you and your spouse because they obviously don't want people to abuse a spousal visa. They want to know that you are actually married or with this person in the long term and that you're not just using this person basically as like a green card situation. So they also require people to like write letters about your relationship with this person to kind of validate it. And this wasn't just me and a boyfriend, this is me and my husband. We are legally married, but even though you are married, they still need all this validation that you are actually a real couple. Things that took quite long was the fact that I had to get a TB test and you have to book that quite far in advance because it is a bit tricky to get an appointment and then you have to wait for the results. Another thing that took quite a bit of time and that is also a requirement for the spousal visa is that you have to prove that you are proficient in English to a certain degree. With this there are kind of two routes that you can follow so you can either do like an English language exam or because my degree was in English I could submit my degree and then get that validated against a UK qualification and that will then meet the same requirement as the language exam. The issue I had with this was that even though you made the application online, they posted the results back to you. So if you're in the UK, using the post, using Royal Mail is totally fine. But if you are in South Africa, you know that the postal service sucks. So this caused me a lot of anxiety. I honestly didn't think that I was gonna get the results back. So on top of this, they also require like bank statements, proof of address, like the normal kind of admin stuff. Okay, so now you have all your information, you've completed all your forms, then you submit that to a company called TLS Contact. I guess they submitted to the British government, British High Commission, I'm not sure where it goes then but then you have to wait 12 weeks to find out if you actually were approved for your visa or not. In my case, we actually paid extra to get the results quicker because at this point, my husband already had a job in the UK and he was leaving to the UK and I didn't even have my visa yet. So we were kind of in a position where we were gonna have to be living apart. He would have to come over to the UK and then I would only join him once my visa has been approved. So my husband actually lived in the UK three months before me. I was living with my parents. Looking back now, I am so thankful actually for having that extra time with my family and friends just with the year that 2020 was. This is also now kind of taking us into the first year's experience in the UK. But just to summarize the process, if you are thinking of applying for a visa, just make sure that you have enough time to apply for everything. Keep in mind that things do take longer than you expect. Really try to book things far in advance. And also keep in mind that it is a pricey process, but at least I have my visa now for two and a half years before I have to worry about it again. That's obviously still quite far ahead into the future. So before we get ahead of ourselves, let's go over my first year in the UK. I 
I don't think I've actually said this in the video yet so just to confirm I am really happy with my decision to move to the UK also where we're currently living in Edinburgh this is just one of the most beautiful cities that I've ever seen so the fact that I get to live here just feels so incredible and I feel so grateful for this opportunity but let me tell you 2020 did not make it easy so going back a year our plan was never to end up in Edinburgh my husband found a job in Oxford which is just full circle moment because of my fascination with studying at Oxford so that was really cool that we had an opportunity to move there and we were so excited about that what made the first few months hard was the fact that basically we spent all our savings on just being able to afford the move most of our furniture and everything we sold in South Africa just because it was very expensive to ship things over so we had to kind of buy everything again but that was okay because we were in a new country we were so excited just to kind of explore a new town we were only an hour away from London which was amazing for me so we were kind of just exploring on a budget but still just having a great time settling into our new home into our new jobs but then fast forward to April and we get hit with a global pandemic like I'm honestly still just in shock that that was actually real that that actually happened to us like I don't know if anyone else also feels like that but it's just crazy to think what we've lived through I'm a very optimistic person so I was like this is just gonna take like two to three months then it's gonna be over with my parents and my sister had plans to come visit us in the UK so I was like it's gonna be fine they'll still be able to come so I'm staying optimistic, we started working from home, the both of us, and then the UK government rolled out the furlough scheme, which was very beneficial to the company that I was working at because we were in the travel industry. So a couple of us were placed on furlough at that company. You kind of getting paid to be on holiday, so that seems really cool, but then at the same time, it's like you feel guilty because the rest of your team has to work harder because there's less people to cover the work and you also feel very scared for your job security emotionally it was quite an intense time but that's when i also decided to start focusing on my youtube videos again and create content making the youtube videos was definitely also a way for me just to stay productive i think if anyone thinks back to those first few months of lockdown we were so restricted in what we were able to do we were only allowed out once a day i know in south africa people weren't even allowed out of their house like how crazy is that and then came one of the toughest moments of 2020 and probably one of the toughest moments of like being an adult for me so far that was the day that i found out that i was made redundant i immediately understood why the company had to do this it also wasn't just me there were a few of us that were made redundant and then obviously across the world there were people going through this at the same time as this my husband also wasn't too happy at his job so we were both just focusing full time on finding new jobs and that's when my husband was offered this opportunity in edinburgh and when things just started turning around for us again it did take me a bit longer to find a job this time around i don't know if that was because of the pandemic so there were just less opportunities at that time but in the end i was offered a job at an e-commerce agency where i'm currently working honestly after everything i was just so happy to have a job but the fact that it's actually a job that i enjoy i am so grateful for that basically my first year in the uk was not at all what i expected i definitely didn't think i would end up in scotland but i am so grateful for the year that it was because i feel like i grew a lot as a person and i feel like i found a city that i really love a job that i am so thankful for and i honestly think it couldn't have turned out any better for us i feel like that was so much talking this is cold now might just go for the cookie if you're still watching thank you so much for getting so far into the video if you enjoyed it please remember to give it a big thumbs up down below i'm gonna get into the pros and cons of the move now 
I'm gonna start with the cons and it was actually quite tricky to make a list of cons a apart from the obvious one which is of course missing your family and friends and just homesickness in general. So even though this is an obvious con and you do expect this to happen, it is kind of inevitable, I would still take this into serious consideration when making your decision. Your ability to cope with the homesickness, in my opinion, is what's going to determine whether you can do this on the long term or not. Even for me, someone that's had this dream to move to the UK since I was little, last year I did question like, was this worth it? Why, why did I do this? At least for me, I do have my husband here, so I'm not by myself, but the homesickness doesn't go away and you will have to make that decision to be happy and to embrace the opportunity that you have here. Speaking of opportunity, the UK has opportunities in many different ways. For me, I mentioned earlier the opportunity to travel easier. For specific industries, there might be better work opportunities here. But even though there are more opportunities here, I would definitely say that the living costs are also higher here than in South Africa. Eating out, buying clothes, and just your day-to-day -day expenses like rent and electricity, things like that are quite expensive here. That will also depend on where you are living in the UK. If you're gonna live in the countryside or a smaller town that's not too central, I definitely think it won't be the case, but because we've been living in Oxford and Edinburgh that are quite prominent towns and cities here in the UK, our living costs have definitely been a lot more expensive than they were in South Africa. But even though the living costs are higher, I definitely also think that your living standards are higher, so I'll get into that a bit more when we talk about the pros. With my last con, I definitely do not mean to offend anyone, but in my opinion, and it is only my opinion, I think that South African food is a lot better than food here in the UK. But that might also just be because South African food is what I grew up with and that is what I am used to. How do I say this without being disrespectful? I think South African food has more flavor to it. So for that reason, I just think we have better food in South Africa. Maybe you don't agree with me and that is totally fine. So I'm gonna move swiftly onto the pros and the first pro I have is the culture and history that you experience here in the UK. Compared to South Africa, the UK is just a country that's a lot older than South Africa and a lot older than a lot of other countries in the world as well. So for that reason, there's just a lot more history History here. I absolutely love all the old buildings and the cobblestone roads, all the museums that you can go visit here. So that's just something that I love to be surrounded by. If you are someone that also likes that old architecture, loves going to museums, ballets, operas, musicals, I just think the UK has a lot to offer in that aspect. I mentioned earlier that if you're in the UK, the rest of the world is a lot more accessible. And I also feel like brands and trends and new fashion, technology, things like that are also a lot more accessible here. There's a lot of brands that you cannot get in South Africa or that you have to import in South Africa. This is mostly related to fashion and beauty, I would say. But here I feel like you are where the trains are starting. Another big pro for me is the public transport. I am not a big fan of driving. The fact that I can just get a bus to anywhere and the fact that you can basically take a train to anywhere in the country is just so cool to me. We do have public transport in South Africa, but you can't really compare the infrastructure you have here to the public transport system in South Africa. That was my last pro and that also brings us to the end of this video about my experience here in the UK. If there's any of the topics that you want to know more about, just let me know in the comments and then I can make more in-depth videos of each section. I really hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it interesting and useful and thank you so much for watching again and then I'll see you guys in my next video.